In this video, we'll be building this six foot console table. Uh, this one's made out of reclaimed eastern red cedar. So uh, let's get started. Uh, it's a real simple cut list. We're going to cut six boards to a little over six foot long and uh, six boards a little over 34 inches long. And after we get them all planed and jointed up and uh, glued up in the panels, we'll cut them to final length. Right now I'm just cutting them oh, about an inch and a half over. And you can see how, how nasty they look here. Believe it or not, this used to be somebody's deck. Somebody uh, built their deck out of eastern red cedar. And uh, I'm not a huge eastern red cedar fan. It's just uh, too red for me. But uh, but it's still, it, I can appreciate the wood. It's a beautiful wood. And uh, it just blows my mind that you, this used to be somebody's deck. This four, first board I'm, I'm doing in real time. And I just wanted to do that so you could see the process. See how long it takes to get through one board. And uh, you can kind of see as it goes through the joiner that bottom side and how it's getting cleaned up and after I get that bottom side done we'll uh, we'll then move to, to one of the edges and get it straight and uh, and a good 90 to that bottom then we'll run through our other 11 boards so now I've got a good straight edge on there it's 90 to the bottom 11 boards to go. You know, I love the look of this console table. I've, I've built it several times for customers. And uh, it's just a really good looking table. And it's actually a very simple build, as you'll see as we go through the process here. Now all 12 boards have been, you know, flattened on one face and uh, have been flattened on one edge. Now we're going to get the other face flattened with the planer. In this project, you know, it's real important that the... Uh, uh, the thickness of the legs and the thickness of the top are the same. The uh, the shelf can be can be a different thickness, and it actually is. I uh, I picked out after I got everything f almost flat. I had a couple boards that still needed to go through the planer a couple more times, and uh, I saved those as my uh, as my shelf boards, and uh, made sure I you know kept track of those separate from the others and uh, ran those through the through the planer one or two more passes so that shelf is actually a, a slightly thinner than uh, than the rest of the the project but uh, just as long as your legs and your top are the same thickness that shelf can be any thickness you you know that you end up with now we're getting that fourth side cut off at the table saw it's, we're making a nice parallel cut to that uh, straight edge we did on the joiner and then all four sides are going to be pretty and flat and square. You know, this is one thing I love about uh, using old old wood that you know would have ended up in a dump or a fire. I mean, you know, you look at that old wood that somebody tore out that used to be their deck. And uh, after you get, get it ran through the planer and the joiner, and just how beautiful it is again. Now we've got four panels we're going to glue up here. This, like I said, this is a simple build. Four four panels we're gluing up. These are this is one of the leg panels. They all need to be the same uh, same width when you get done. Except for the uh, the shelf, that's that's you know whole, we we uh, just like the thickness of the shelf, the width of the shelf. Um, I cut just slightly thinner, so uh, you know it has. I think I'd made it a quarter inch uh, thinner than the than the top and the 
and the legs um, and that just gives it a little reveal on each side and I don't know if you just noticed there but uh, you know that one of those boards I flipped around so I got the white on both boards facing each other and it's just a little more it's just a little more visually appealing uh, that way so you know, I always try and pay attention to the grain as much as I can when I'm when I'm gluing up these panels. You can see the the variety of clamps I'm using here. I've I've went through over the years, uh, you know, buying clamps off of Craigslist back in the day and Amazon Marketplace uh, more recently. Uh, and I think, you know, I have a large collection of pipe clamps, and I think every one of them I've bought used. And most of them are the are the Bessies. They're, they're a great pipe clamp. I've, I've used the same ones for years, and they were used when I bought them. Um, but there are a few other brands in my collection, which, you know, these are these are some of them here. I have no idea why they have a, a, a T on the end of them there, a plumbing T. But uh, it was there, and I haven't bothered taking it off. These are, I, I only have four of these that I got from somebody, and I actually, these are my favorite ones. I'd, if, I'd love my whole collection to be, you know, these clamps. I like how tall they stand, but uh, I just got these, I just have these four. There we go. Now we're just going to clean the, uh, you know, this is the next day. Got them out of clamps. Uh, cleaning the, the glue squeeze out off of there. Flatten, flattening those, uh, those joints with the belt sander. And you can see the hose coming out of that belt sander. I, you know, I've got it hooked up to a, a small dust extractor. And I've actually thought about doing a, a video talking about dust extractors a little bit. Uh, you know, I, the brand I use is not, uh, uh, oh, it's not the Merc, we, you know, we use Merca Sanders, but it's not a Merca dust, dust extractor. It's not the Festool. It's uh, it's a German company, and I've, you know, I've read somewhere that uh, that they're the ones that make the, the Merca dust extractors. Uh, but anyway, I've thought about doing a video on on the extractors and if if you're interested in that let me you know let me know so you see here i'm uh uh this is the shelf and we're making i'm making uh tenons on the end of on the end of the shelf uh that's going to go into the legs and uh i'm doing that with my with my uh, router i've just got that jig i've made there with that fence that uh slides in in uh oh just in some slots i've put in that in that piece of plywood. It's a very simple jig and it it's, works excellent. I, I love that jig. We'll, I'll use the same jig in just a little bit to uh, to cut the mortises in the legs. So you know I, I set it to a certain depth and just uh, cut down both sides of this of this shelf and created a, uh, a tin in there and then we'll cut the cheeks off with uh, with a pull saw. So you know the bit I have in there would is is big enough to make this in one pass, but you don't want to you don't want to take that big of a bite all at once. Um, that's a good way to to either burn up your bit or uh, burn up your router motor. And uh, you know years ago I I burned up a router motor. I spent some money and bought a, a nice Triton router, and uh, you know it's it was early on in my woodworking, and I uh, I burned that sucker up. made me sick so uh, now I'm lining that tenon up to the leg where it's going to go in making sure it's straight and uh, after we get it all clamped on there and straight then I'm just going to trace it on that leg so I can see where my tenon's going to go and I'll only need to do that on one leg 
and uh, and you'll see why here in a minute. So now I've got that traced on there. I'm going to use that exact same jig on my router, and uh, I'm just lining that up. Now the the bit I have in there does not reach all the way across this. Excuse me, this mortise. So uh, I'm lining up with with the first line, and uh, I've got a depth gauge set on my router, and I'll make several passes on this line until I get deep enough. We'll flip over to the other side and make the exact same cuts on the other side. And then uh, we'll come back to this side, line up to that next line, and and do it again. So on this other side, I, I, you know, you see there's no no lines there. The only thing I'm going to do is, is put lines on the end so I know where to stop. Because I've got the depth set up with that jig. All I need to know is, is where I need to stop on both sides. Now we'll flip back over to the other side and get uh, get lined up with that second line and uh, and do it one more time and we'll be done. So right there I'm lining up with that second line. I'm going to make a pass. I'm going to measure it with the calipers. It's a uh, little off so I'm going to do another little test cut there, measure it again and that's, and that's it. You know, if you don't have a set of calipers, you you ought to buy a set. That's the the pair I use it is they're not expensive. You know, they're very inexpensive set, and uh, and I've been using them for years, and they work great for us. You know, one side you can measure the the thickness of the uh, of your tenon here, and then use the other side to uh, measure the inside of your mortise, and uh, it's really nice to. You know, it's just a really good way to see to to double check that. And what I'm doing here is knocking off the corners of those tenons. Uh, you know, you can do that, or you can square up the the mortise. And uh, to me, it's just easier to knock those corners off that tenon. And this side, I just had in there, you know, holding it up. Now we're getting glue on it, and I'll put it back together. Um, the one thing I missed, and I, I'm sorry that I missed this. You can see the 45s on the top of these on the top of these legs, and the 45s on the end of the, the top. I missed filming that. We uh, we did that on the miter saw, and uh, you know the miter saw didn't reach all the way across, so I I had to lean it one way, and uh, and I made all my cuts with it leaning that way and on all three pieces and then I had to flip it back the other way to uh, to get the other side cut after I got flipped over the other side I you know turned my piece around and uh, and got it lined up and and made those cuts and I'm you know it was fairly simple we did on the minor saw but I'm still I'm sorry that I you know I missed video and that I wish I could have shown that to you um, and now we're just getting it all clamped up after this glue dries, you know, I'll, I'll come back the next day and, and we're going to pin that joint with some, uh, with some dowels. You know, we're not depending on just the glue there, um, which is what you're seeing here. And somebody's probably wondering about that. You know, as you tighten these clamps up, uh, to get that 45 lined up right where you want it, sometimes, you know, you've got clamps going both directions. And, uh, when you're tightening one up, sometimes you need to loosen the other one. Uh, you know, that's just something that uh, I've seen people not think about. They're trying to tighten both clamps up to get that to get that right where they want it. But uh, sometimes you need to loosen one to tighten the other until you get your 45, you know, exactly where it needs to be. Now I'm just marking where I'm going to put those dowels. I'm going to put three dowels into both joints. They're three-eighths inch dowels, and, uh, and I'm drilling three inches in. So it'll be three inches long and three eighths, and three of them. So a bunch of threes there. There's a nice shot of my elbow as I drill those holes.
Now that 45 had a few uh, little gaps and spots over here, so uh, I'm using some uh, sawdust out of the sander and some glue and uh, and just filling in any little gaps there. And once that dried and we got it sanded down, you know, it basically just disappears. I I had to put some epoxy in a couple knots and whatnot on the top of this of this piece and uh, that's what I'm doing here with the belt sanders just cleaning that epoxy up and we use a small round over ground over bit and just uh, knocking the corners down I think it's an eighth inch round over bit So as you can see, this is a pretty simple build, um, but I think it's a really pretty piece. It's one of my favorite favorite pieces we do, even though there's not a lot of uh, uh, oh creativity in the build process. But uh, I just like the the end result. I think it's a real pretty piece of furniture. And I've made this made this thing several times for you know we we actually have one in our house and and uh, have made and sold it several times in our store. And this is the first one I've done out of cedar. All the rest of them have been out of oak. Now we're going to finish it with uh, with Rubio Monocoat. And then, you know, the nice thing about Rubio, if you've never used it, well, but before I talk about the Rubio, I'll talk about the sanding process, getting to the Rubio. Um, you know, we, we sand, I, the, my first sand is with the, with an 80 grit sandpaper. And then, uh, we'll come back and, uh, uh, use a wet washcloth and kind of pop the grain and then sand with 120. And, uh, and then you're ready for the Rubio. They don't want you to sand past that because uh, the oil needs to be able to penetrate the wood. Uh, so there's the finished project. Uh, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of this wood, but uh, the, the look of the, of the piece, I, I love. I love the style. It's, uh, it's a simple, easy build. I uh, hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, uh, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. Uh, we've got quite a few other builds up already and uh, posted more every day. Thanks for watching.